Good evening, Dice Roll fans, and welcome back to Self Isolation, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition campaign set in the world of Everon. My name is Tom, and I will be your Dungeon Master for this evening. Joining me tonight are some of our returning group of regular adventurers who are now all made it to 4th level. Uh, yay. First up, yay, indeed. Yay. Uh, first up tonight, we have uh, Mr. James Oakley. <coughs> Hello, I am Oakley. I'm playing Callus Lanick, the human wizard, and I can't remember the other little bit of information that I was going to put in. <laughs> you throw uh, me off by putting me first. Well, you know, I like to keep you on your toes. Uh, next up, Miss Emily Westcos. Hi, I'm Em, and I'm playing Nota Dwarf to Sivith, a uh, mark ascribing gnome warlock who is rather thirsty. <sighs> That's a That's mouthful. Nice. It is, isn't it? <laughs> and he likes a metal. After a brief <laughs> hiatus of basically two months, Mr. James Lacey. Hello, I'm Lacey, and I play Dizzy Druk, a uh, hobgoblin wizard. Also joining us later on tonight will be uh, Mr. James Harper and Mr. Lee Shaw, who will introduce themselves when they arrive. So... Last time, after receiving the grisly delivery of a severed hand bearing a Boromar signet ring, you set off to resolve what appeared to be Dion's kidnapping. As it turns out, you found the Boromar lieutenant had staged their capture to gain access to a Dask hideout deep within the Cogs, the lower levels of the city of Shan. The Dask have an interest in the plans the Boromar clan currently possess for an infernal combustion engine, and intended to use Dion as leverage to obtain them. With your help, Dion escaped his quote-unquote captors and sent you deeper into the lair to capture a bound fire elemental, a key component of said engine. In the base levels of the cog hub, you found a rune-bound reservoir where arcane lava flows from the tunnels above had been channeled and collected. A large figure in a ragged hooded cloak briefly engaged with you before disappearing into mist. The lava pool then revealed a fire elemental who you fought, weakened and captured before returning with your prize to Dion. Tonight's adventure picks up a few days later at your safe house, the Bountiful Vine, Boromar-owned nightclub in the Upper Dura district of Shan. It's mid-morning, and a bright sun is shining down as you enjoy a late breakfast at the tables outside the nightclub. Claude, the dwarf custodian, has busied themselves clearing up from the previous night's trade, and as you enjoy a bit of downtime, a large raven lands at your table carrying a black envelope. The letter inside reads as follows. The priesthood of the restful watch send their condolences for your loss. We regret that it is our duty to contact the next of kin, to claim their remains, and carry out their last rites in accordance with their beliefs. A chamber of remembrance has been allocated within our temple. Please attend as soon as is convenient. And it's addressed from the temple of the restful watch, Orion's Holt, the city of the dead, Sean. Doesn't say who. Sorry, it doesn't say who's dead at all. Uh, nope, the note does not mention any specific individuals. I'm just trying to think what my uh, like last rights and beliefs would be on that side of things for my character. Surely it's the last rites and beliefs of their the chap who's died rather than ours. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I, I I'm just assuming that they might be of similar ilk as the fact that it's because we it, it doesn't have a name for us either. How do who do we know is the next of kin? Are all of us the next of kin? So you would know climate. that um, the the city of the dead is essentially a, almost like a. a mausoleum town outside of of Shan, just located off the northern edge of the city and it is watched over by um the priests of the sovereign host who are the sort of the major benevolent pantheon of gods within um Everon. um generally most uh, sort of common citizens within the city are cremated 
Um, but a few of the um, sort of more noble houses, the more wealthy individuals, can afford to have their remains interred within um, the various sort of sepulchres and, and tomb buildings within the City of the Dead. Um, other than that, you wouldn't have had really any specific dealings with that area of the city either so far or um, previous during your prior time in Shan. Um, well, I guess I would like to thank Claude for his stellar, uh, work last week or whenever, like a couple of weeks ago. And then I guess we should be on our way to find out what is the crack with this, uh, death situation. Okay. okay. Um, Callus, do you want to do anything before set out? I'm not going to do anything specifically, but does, is, do I really know anyone in this city that would be worthy of this kind of remembrance? Like, I'm, would I be able to think of anyone that is this sort of well off? Or... I can only so, assume it would be Boromar related. Yeah, that's that's the only thing I'm assuming at the moment. Why or it's trapped. Just roll it's me a, uh, a trap. Let's call this a uh, religion check. Oh no! Uh, my religion is. Oh, actually, that's not bad. Twenty. Okay. So, in your various studies, um, you would have encountered. Um, not so much any specific uh, burial or funerary rites, but you'd be aware of the sort of the kind of like the standard operating principles of um, the Temple of the Restful Watch. Now, right. you know that um, they are um, a sect of um, priests aligned to. Um, the, the sort of sovereign deities, they themselves do not revere any one specific god or symbol, but you know that um, Orion's Halt is a temple specifically dedicated to Orion, who is the pantheon of, uh, who's the god of knowledge and law. Okay. As part of the sort of Sort of standard procedures, unless a body has been brought to the temple by the next of kin, the priests have an obligation to attempt to determine who they are and contact them um, before the remains are cremated. Because it's not uncommon to come across sort of, you know, the odd unfortunate accident where someone has died within the city and the body needs to be dealt with because Shan is not, by any stretch of the imagination, a small area of civilization. So generally yes. there is this sort of almost like processing center where they will take in bodies, identify them where they can, but then look to get them cremated as quickly as possible just to, basically just to dispose of the remains. But the priesthood are sympathetic to <clears throat> certain beliefs and... Um, death rituals that may need to be carried out at the request of the next of kin or at the request of the deceased. So it wouldn't be uncommon to receive this kind of communication if they have received a body, but they are unable to determine what their last rites should be. Okay. So whoever this is, is probably from the Boromar clan and has just for some reason designated us as their next of kin. Dion, or maybe? It's a trap. I feel like we'd know if Dion 
was dead. I'd be a bit Unless pissed. this is another of his ruses. I'd be a bit pissed seeing as we did like all that last week to save him. <laughs> but having said that, if Dion is dead, he had some considerable wealth. Maybe they got gangrene from their stump arm. <laughs> You're Either all way, fast. Do you know I that? feel like we should go ahead and find <laughs> out this. That's all we can do, really. <clears throat> I'll go Maybe use it. some caution. I'm not sure the DM will uh, accept us just saying, now. Nah, we're just going to sit in the pub for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit this one out because I don't even remember them. <laughs> Sorry, that was a joke. Yeah. I, 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 I feel is, the need to point I chuckled and just didn't press my button. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, that was less aimed at... I was laughing inside. Yeah, it was less it was less aimed at you two and more aimed at the DM. I was like, no, I don't want him to think that. I'm just like, oh, I've not been here a while. Fuck it, I'll sit in the pub. <laughs> That's what my character would do. <laughs> um, what time of day is it? It's mid morning, you said, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, so it's late morning. Yeah. Say probably sort of like ten, eleven ish. Well, is it too early to have a drink? Do you think, guys? Never. Then... One to go. We got Claude, enough. Three ales, please, Claude. Have we got enough time to walk to this place? How far is it from us? To one side and just nods to you. Busies himself off inside. I just enjoy that you've taken the time to drink before leaving. (laughs) So, walking to um, the City of the Dead. I feel like it's quite far away, right? Yeah, it's it's literally, it's almost the furthest opposite end of the city to where you are. It's probably going to take you about two and a half, maybe three hours to get there on foot. No, I thought you were going to say two and a half or three days. Yeah, I thought he was going to say that, but that's fine by me. Yeah, I mean, unless you want to fork out for another Sky Coach, uh, Callus, but I'm also happy to walk. I feel like a walk would do me good today. (laughs) We're in no rush. I think we're walking, Tom. That's what I've taken so far. Claude <laughs> uh, appears to be receptive to this, and he has brought out um, three, basically, water skins um, filled with mm. uh, the um, the most medium-priced ale that you could find. Does it mean so we can take it with us? Yep. Cool. Damn right. Basically, each of you got road drinks. Uh, I will pay for these. Uh, Claude just sort of looks you and... Um... That's very kind of you, Noted. So that'll be... Suspiciously. Um, <laughs> what's it going to be? That's going to be... Uh, let's, let's call it one silver. Okay. Uh, At what point Claude's are you going to blow poison in my face, Noted, for this? <laughs> Claude just kind of bites down on the silver coin and then goes, and pockets it. I 100% set the wrong button to be my talk button. <laughs> For the benefit Baseball. of stream listeners, M is currently dealing with a push to talk situation. It's going swimmingly so far. Oh, it's gone so well. So, you hit the road and you make your way down to the lower tier of the Gura district make your way across through to Memphis Plateau Central Plateau across the north edge and out the northern end of the city to the city of the dead as soon as you arrive there there is uh, this sort of very reverent hush falls it's almost as if the, the noise and hubbub of the city has been completely muted and aside from a, a few um, you know, bits of bird song, the occasional sound of wind moving through, you, you're not really hearing anything else um, going on. The area around outside of North Edge, the City of the Dead itself, is... Um, this large 
very well organized very well kept collection of crypts start off sort of embedded to the cliff face on the northern edge of the city as you make your way down and you can see that uh, there is a sort of main causeway leading to a temple um, in the center which Callus certainly would recognize as Orion's Halt and as you're making your way through there's the you know, occasional sort of mourners just making their way to and from um, the various tombs. You can see these people are you know, relatively well dressed, they're, they're quite smartly turned out, they've got very uh, very sort of elegant uh, attire to them, all sort of shirts and dresses and such. And as you make your way along the main causeway to the, the temple you start to see more of the priests of the Restful Watch. And they're dressed in very sort of sombre brown and black robes. It's hard to see their face. They've got this very sort of uh, kind of like Franciscan monk sort of appearance. Hoods up, rope board tied around the, uh, the waist. And they're just sort of moving back and forth. You see them placing flowers and just cleaning the um, sort of leaves and dust off the, the mausoleums. At the front of the temple is a large archway, no doors, it's completely open. And as you make your way in, there is a um, shrine to the Sovereign Host, which is again this sort of unaligned um, religious point of service. And just sort of busying himself, um, tidying the the altar is um, a relatively tall um, priest, completely black robes. And they turn to face you, and as they do, you can see the uh, point of a very uh, straight beak coming out from underneath the, the hood. And in this incredibly monotone voice, they just look at you and say, Welcome, travellers. How may the priesthood help you? So this dude's modelled after Riff Raff from the Rocky Horror Show. <laughs> Not exactly. I don't know. Sounds very O'Brien-y to me. Good <laughs> afternoon, sir, madam, them. Um... We have been sent a letter here and have been told to come here post haste. So here we are. I see. They drop the hood down and you can see that as their hands come up to grab the hood, they've got these sort of very long black talon-like fingers with these black feathers going back along them tinged with this sort of slight emerald sheen to them. Do we and recognize them? Like the... You do not. You have never met this okay. individual before at Oh, all. sorry, I should have been more specific. Do I recognize the race? As in, are we? would I yes. know what an Arakokra um, is? You would all recognize them as being an Arakokra. Okay. Um, they're very uh, very much like a, a, a humanoid raven at this point. Okay. As they pull the hood down, the head is completely covered in these, these black feathers with a slight tint of, of green to them jet black eyes and this um, very straight beak um, again completely so he, black but tinged with sort of slight bits of, of, of grey so he really leaned there. into like his looks when deciding on a career path I mean it's what's the um, not, whatever the physical version of nominative determinism is oh okay is it Cheryl Crow <laughs> <laughs> At the risk of uh, ruining I yourself, to me. The, uh, the priest introduced him and says, my name is Sutik of the Restful Watch. Mm -hmm. but okay. Please, you may call me Sut. Has he it ever is... been anywhere near a very cold wall? Many of the walls here are cold. It helps to preserve the bodies. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, we we had the letter, as Notad said. Who yes. who is it that you wish us to identify? Please follow oh. me. And they turn and make their way around the altar and down a flight of steps. Well, they are excellently suited at working here, aren't they? Hmm, quite. I'll just Almost follow. Almost a bread for the job. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little creeped out by this guy. <laughs> Let's get this over with. As you follow I'll, I'll down follow. the steps, the uh, stairway is very well lit. There's torches set along the wall. You go down to a uh, sort of basement mortuary. And you can see that there are little alcoves set off along the, the sides of this tunnel you're being led along. And in each one you see roughly the same sort of layout. There is a uh, sort of uh, raised plinth in the centre of the room and a few sort of chairs and stools set down either side. Um, across the front of some of them a black curtain has been drawn across. And you can hear um, the occasional just sort of uh, voices and some sort of low sobbing coming from a couple of them. And they lead you to one about halfway down the, uh, the tunnel. And uh, City stops and turns to you and says, Your friend is in here on the table. We have arranged their personal possessions on the small table to the side. Please take as long as you need. You have my sympathies. Yeah, so, can we see a body now? Is it like, can, what sort of shape is it? As you look into the room, you can just see there is this um, almost like coroner's slab of marble in the centre of the room. There is a sheet draped over the top and what would appear to be a humanoid figure underneath. To the side of it, there is a uh, small table with a few um, bits and pieces on there. Um, Satik just gestures for you to enter the room. I follow him in. Presuming yeah. it is a him. Uh, Satik is standing standing at the en entrance. They've got sort of one hand out to just you in. And as you start to move, they make to just prepare to draw the curtain across to give you some privacy. Anyone else feel like whatever's underneath the sheet is going to jump out and be like, surprise! <laughs> <laughs> surprise, <laughs> cocksucker! It wouldn't uh, surprise me at this point. Right, let's do this. Who's pulling the sheet back? I'll do it. I pulled the sheet back. So, as the three of you have made your way in, Satik has drawn the curtain to give you some privacy. Canis, you pull the sheet back. Um, just remind me here we go. <laughs> Dexterity saving throw. <laughs> <clears throat> Actually, yeah. Wisdom saving throw from you, please, Carlos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, I actually do have proficiency in that for some reason. Uh, that is a 15. Okay. You're not too sure what to make of this, but it doesn't completely knock you on your ass. Lying on the table is a male human, short black hair with some flecks of grey going on in there, a short, very carefully trimmed beard. Um, as the, road, sure. the sheet comes further away, you can see that there is a very obvious and familiar burn scar on the top of their left forearm. Do I see the same as this? Was this just Callus seeing this? 
you all see the same thing. Okay. I'm going to need both Notad and um, Daisy to make wisdom saving throws as well, please. Okay. Here we go. Oh, 19. Oh, yeah, we get to see everyone's rolls. Oh, 20. I forgot this is a thing. I've decided to use D&D Beyond tonight for my rolls. I've decided not to because it screwed me last week. That is true. I forgot I could do it and just went into Avery. That's fine. I feel like I've wasted one of my natural 20s today mm. to pass a wisdom save and throw. Okay, so those with a uh, roll of 24, no type with roll of, say, 19. Yes, yeah, sorry, yes. Both it. There's that push to talk coming back. <laughs> <laughs> um. Both of you aren't entirely sure how this is happening, but you look at the body on the table and you look at Callus. You look back at Callus on the table, back at Callus standing over his own corpse. That's what I thought. <laughs> I was Callus. waiting for it. That's what I thought was happening. But I, that's why I asked whether we could see the same thing. I thought maybe it, re it mimicked what you yep. looked like. All three oh of you God. can see that the body on the table is quite clearly callous. Is it a mimic? With um, some uh, quite bad um, cuts across their face and across their arm. Their robes appear to be slightly burnt um, with various tears and such. The wounds have been cleaned, but the... Um, the clothing has remained in more or less the the state in which you you find it there, and it's exactly the same as what Callus is wearing, albeit significantly more beaten up. Is this Callus the same age, or is he older or younger or anything like that? Uh, make me a medicine check, please. Okay. Twenty. I'm on a roll today. Boom. Uh, yeah. Everything you can see indicates that this is identical to Callus, just in a much worse state. Do you happen to have a twin, Callus? Well, not that I can recall. Um, I feel like no good can come from this right are now. Are you able to time travel? Or are you on the edge of being able to discover time travel? If I had, I would not be in this state. Have you ever sold I feel. any of your fingernails to a dodgy peddler? <laughs> <laughs> well, that I may have done. Times can be tough. I was gonna say, have you ever been approached by a warlock who said, don't worry, I just need a bit of hair? <laughs> not like a daily occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose the only thing we can do is round on fuck what was that guy's the Sadiq Birdman Sadiq yeah I think it's just round on him and go so <laughs> care to explain this obvious fix yeah you'd think he'd have shown some sort of like shock or something when he saw Callus do I have yeah, yeah I was what I was thinking but he he just to be honest, I kind of brushed it off as the fact that he just doesn't care. Or he's, he's probably just... seen a lot in his. Uh... So when you when you pull back the curtain to see um, who's in the the hallway, Satik has left. Okay. Can Sweet. I cast detect magic on this to see if it's like an illusion or an alter self or something of that? Elk. Just a genuine yeah. what the fuck is what we're going for. Cast a spell that explains this. Yeah, that's fine. Um, are you ritual casting this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to focus for a few minutes. Okay. Ten specifically. So you're going to spend ten minutes detecting some magic. Yes. Um, whilst Callus is doing that, um, Notad and Daisy, what are you up to? I would like to feel for a pulse. 
Okay. Um, I'd say based on the medicine check that you did earlier, um, there's there's no pulse. This is definitely a cold, dead callus. At the risk of sounding like a murder hobo, if we chopped <laughs> open the body... <laughs> I like real, where this is going. Is this a oh, real no, body? Right. What well, is a part of me that think there's there's so many... I, I don't know whether it falls under what... Uh, not Oakley. Hang on. Callus. Callus. There we go. Might fall into what Callus is already saying. Um, but there's like there's all sorts of spells like simulcrums and things that I presume I would know as a wizard, Tom, before I you would have a game yeah, my you way would, through you would this. Have familiarity with um, magical forms of creating a duplicate. Yeah. Um, if mimics die whilst they are. Oh, mimicking someone no. else do they die in that form or do they revert back to their sort of natural state stop encouraging mimic mimics or, or like a changeling I don't know to be honest any of these things that can do this do you mean like um, a monster mimic yeah Make me okay. a, uh, uh, let's just say a straight uh, let's go to wisdom nature check yeah, Just I guess I'm trying to find out. You would be with like various. Yeah, exactly. Monsters. Like how things work and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, wisdom nature, you said. Yeah. Not 20, 23. Nice. 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 Um, nice. <laughs> nice. Generally, okay. any. Any monsters that you're aware of that can assume another form, um, you you haven't seen the specific example firsthand, but you would be aware that um, Hyman, generally when you? they generally when monsters perish, they will return back to their base form. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, I guess just trying to like work out if there's any legit reason that I can think of of why there might be a Callus 2.0 other than just it's an actual thing, like some sort of trickery. Whoa, 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 whoa. 2.0. <laughs> so as you're sort of standing around this body kind of trying to suss out what's going on, you hear footsteps coming from the hallway. Um, Satik, the raven-like Arakokra priest who has brought you down to this mausoleum, pulls the curtain back and says, I'm sorry to disturb you, but we've also received an invitation to this event. And standing outside are both a warforged and an elf in monk's robes, who will be our late introductions. First of all, uh, Mr. James Harper. Hi there. Uh, I am playing Mike Your Bed Rock, the Digger, a Warforged Storm Surge Sorcerer. And Mr. Lee Shaw. Hi, and I'm playing Hyman Phoenix, a Wood Monk, or Wood Elf Monk, should I say. Cool. Okay. So just to bring you two course. up to speed, you have um, made your way out to the City of the Dead, which is a um, sort of a funeral um, encampment city thing outside of the northern end of Shan, on <laughs> the back of a note that you received inviting you there by the priesthood of the Restful Watch. You have been shown down into this uh, crypt sort of um, uh, mortuary area below the main temple in the city of the dead by a um, an arakokra calling themselves sutik um, who is for all intents and purposes a humanoid raven they've shown you through this tunnel to a little alcove concealed behind a black curtain and as they've pulled that back and introduced you you can see that in the center of the room is a marble coroner's slab Next to it is Callus performing some sort of uh, wizardy ritual. Um, both Daisy and Notad are kind of 
discussing with something between themselves. But what is more unsettling is that on the table is Callus. In addition to the Callus standing next to the table, casting some sort of spell, the Callus on the table is quite dead, and their body, although their wounds have been cleaned, is quite badly beaten up. Do they need to do wisdom saving throws, or can we just get straight on to the next pit? We'll, uh... Hi guys, it's a bit dark. It's a bit dark around here, isn't it? And uh, uh, like, hi, Cal. Cal <laughs> I want to fist bump Mike here, please. That's that's fine. I'll just straight up allow that. Yeah. Uh, oh, hi, hi, hi. Why is there two of them? We are trying to work this out. Is uh, Satik still around? Can I ask him some questions? No, he buggered off. What was the result of the um, cast magic, detect we'll magic? We'll come to that in a second. Satik is sort of just making tracks away, so if you wanted to catch them, you would be able to. Uh, yes, please, I would like to. I would like to ask him how this body came into his possession. I'd like to go with her, please. Him, okay. sorry. <laughs> Um, he got feathers. This is all very confusing. Satik turns and says, "The priesthood operates a patrol through the city. Any of those who have this fallen guy. are brought here, and where we can, we will look to notify next of kin. Where we are unable to, they will be cremated, their ashes scattered amongst the gardens of remembrance." Hmm. This individual was brought to us by one of our patrols. Jesus, I bet you're fun at parties. Oh, just about to say the same thing. How <laughs> weird is that? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're fun at parties. <laughs> nice one, Mike. Thanks. 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 I assure you that we do not have many parties. Ours is a somber and reflective life. Day of the Dead, though. Yes. Hey, Dio de la Morte. That is definitely a party day. Ooh, party. <laughs> Sound very fun. <laughs> I'm convinced that you Morris dance. <laughs> I know, James. I, I feel like we've got all we can out of this uh, kiddo. He didn't actually say where he found it, he just said they do a I, patrol. I don't think he knows. Does he know I someone can who would? speak with the captain of the patrol to see if I can find where this individual was recovered from. Uh, yeah, any info like to... you can find would be good. Very I'd like good. to go with, please, if that's okay. I As a question. I'm afraid I cannot let you accompany me. The records of individuals who have passed on are private between the priesthood and the next of kin directly. As the records oh. cover many individuals, we cannot allow you in. Are we not here because we are the next of kin? Yes, but such records are covered by the Gravedigger's policy regulations, GDPR as we refer to it. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh no. You can't yet. give a DM inspiration, and today will not be an exception. <laughs> <laughs> I've never uh, been happier to walk I into a joke return, in my life. I will return as swiftly as I am able to with this information. Please. Please, people are dying over here waiting. If so, then it is fortunate that the next of kin are already here. It saves us the use of a raven. That was a joke. Okay. You may laugh if you wish. Ha. Oh. <laughs> Can someone explain it to me when he's gone? So Satik just kind of bows a little bit and makes their way back off. Um, so by this point, I would say that Callus, your ritual has completed. Um, as far as the body goes, it's, you know, that sensation where you 
a speaking through a mic, like you're, you're speaking, you're hearing your own voice played back to you a fraction of a second out of sync, and it causes you to get tongue tied. Yes. Every, every time that you have scanned over the body, you've got that kind of feedback. Like, you, you recognize that it is. It's, it's magical feedback caused by you trying to get through sort of certain wards and protections that you came up with. And you can kind okay. of feel that the, the sort of as the, oh, as good. the strands of, protect, of detect magic go and try to sort of search through the body for any, any auras, you can feel them kind of pinging back. But it's immediately familiar that this is this is magic that you cast on yourself. Like, it, it, you've you've never taught anyone else these particular fabrics or, or weaves of spells to to have anyone copy this. Hmm. What does stick out for you is on the um, small table next to the slab is um, a collection of what Satik referred to as personal belongings. Um, on there you can see that there is a uh, immediate um, resonance from a uh, spell book which again you're getting the same feedback you're like this this is your spell book that you're detecting. May I make a suggestion to... You would be unaware uh, of this so far. Oh, okay. Um, you can see that there are various little bits and pieces on the table. Again, all of this stuff you're like looking at and go, this is, this is my stuff. The only anomalous piece is that there is like a wireframe <laughs> cube within a cube on the table, which appears to have okay. sort of several of the like struts are kind of bent out slightly as if like something has kind of almost as if it's like held something that's then exploded like the 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 main structure of it is still there but a couple of the like spurs are just bent out and slightly charred okay um first things first i'm gonna take my spell book mm -hmm. and um Take that as my spare, but also flick through it to see if there's any different spells in there to what I currently have or would be aware of. I would also, before I do that, have a quick mooch at this cube and relay okay. everything that I have thought to everyone else. So as you start relaying this information to everyone, you go over to the table and you pick up the cube. Every one of you immediately feels the sudden pressure on your skulls. Oh, ah, crap. Your oh. vision starts to blur and go to this bright white and you can't see or hear anything. And there's a faint ringing in your ear, like a sort of tinnitus buzz that starts to reduce and reduce and reduce. And you hear a couple of voices coming through. Your vision is still completely whited out at this point. And the first voice says, So you are telling me that we would need to make a test run of this before we can look to make more? Well, ye yes, Lady Alera, we would need to make at least uh, one sufficient test run of the, the new equipment before it is, is suitable for us to look at mass producing them. But it could represent certain uh, advantages for us in terms of exploration and 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 research where we're able to travel further without having to rely on any of the, the dragon marked houses or their expensive transport options as your vision starts to come back you find that you are all standing in a um, similar sized if not slightly larger room the walls are covered with bookshelves and scrolls and there's a large window on the far side of the room. The centre of the room is occupied by a very large desk covered in blueprints, tomes, obligatory drippy candles that aren't lit because there's enough daylight coming in. 
and standing behind the table looking over the plans, you can see Lady Elira Boromar and Castar, the gnome who works as their chief advisor. I would say at this point, um, Callus and Notad, can you just make me a quick perception check, both of you, please? Yes, boss. <laughs> Things are going to get perceptive. Mm, seven. <laughs> I swear it's uh, honkies like my freaking bad luck charm. I was rolling 20s before you started. Yeah, yeah, all right. God damn it. So, Notad, you are completely distracted by the fact that Elira is in the room with you. <laughs> you could first less you. about your surroundings. You're already thinking, all right, I know what I'm going to say. I know what I'm going to say here. I know. I know what's going on. <laughs> Callus, Smash. as you look around, you don't recognize this particular room, but from the window, you can see the architecture of the main building that it is part of. And you recognize this okay. as being Morgrave University, which is. Okay. Essentially, a university that occupies an entire district within the Upper Memphis Ward in Sharn. Um, this is one of the sort of main um, main points of history and arcane knowledge and research within Sharn. It's somewhere where you've certainly spent at least a couple of years studying um and training but again you don't recognize this particular room that you're in so you know where you are what the overall sort of position you are within the city but you like i say you don't know where you are within that building i sort of snap my fingers in front of notad's face and point out to him this is morgrave university probably somewhere not far from where we would have lived oh yes i definitely noticed that too um good job callus telling everyone else things that i was definitely aware of <laughs> at this point is, is he still steer, staring at Alira? <laughs> I would my say, eyes have not moved <laughs> i would say with that role yeah you you did your best to break Break that line of concentration. Break but, the uh, first. No. At this point, um, Castor looks up and goes, "Are you? Are you folks all right?" Anyone want to ask him what year it is? Shit, I might. Sorry, I might. Are we all first right? of all, it, it is just me and no Tad. No, no, it is right, all of you. Is all everyone? Us. Yeah. Yeah, that's what to say. I might have I kind of assumed we were saying this as kind of like an apparition and that we were. I, I did. There. I did. But we kind of been transported there. I... Okay. Maybe. Um, hi! I know you and you. Hi! Uh, hello? Hi! Are you. Are you feeling well? You all have a sort of. Uh, well, sort of I feel like my joints you. are kind of. Kind of, uh, I feel okay. Look, there's like, there's no strings on me at all. Nothing slowing me down. Oh, <laughs> to hold, nothing's holding me up. Nothing's really messing me around. So, yeah, I'm good. Well, I'm glad. Um, so, for your part in this little venture, I will need you to go down to uh, Laughing Steel's Emporium. Uh, they're located in uh, Little Zendrick, uh, over by Seventh Tower. Uh, take this receipt. They have been working on a component for me. I need you to bring it back here, and then hopefully we should be able to get on with our final project. And the final project is the just to remind us combustion engine. What we've just spent the last thirty minutes discussing. Look, I'm not yes, going over it again. Go to Laughing Steel's Emporium, <laughs> collect this part, bring it back. It is imperative, imperative, that nothing happens to the casing. Um, 
Yes, we we are definitely aware of what you told us to do, and we will go do that. However, um, Hyman here, he has a condition that makes him forget very easily. We're trying to be inclusive. What? You have? Who's Hyman? We're we're trying (laughs) to make him not feel weird for, for having this issue, so he does quite often need things repeating. Don't want it to Hyman? be weird. Who's Hyman? Oh God! It's not important that you know the exact details of the plan. All I need you to do is retrieve this component from Laughing Stills Emporium, bring it back to me. We shall then take it down to the workshop, add it as the final missing part of the combustion engine, and then we can proceed with the first phase of testing of our new vehicles. Okie kokie. Artichokey? Correct. At this point, Ilira comes over to you, Notad, and just takes your hand and goes, oh, I God. trust that oh, God. you will be able to oh, good God. pick this part up for us. Quick. Oh, Christ. Intuition check. Uh, uh, anything you say, my mistress. Wonderful. Anything. And she just. Anything. Except brings your hand up, kisses the knuckles, and then lets it go. And then returns round to the other side of the desk and continues looking at the plans. I will never wash this hand again. Dearest in my pants. <laughs> I'm still waving my face in front of... Uh, waving my face, waving my hand in front of Hyman's face. It's me! It's me! <laughs> Come on! Be me? Hyman again! Who's Shmi? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Transition time. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll do just a quick montage transition of you guys Scooby doing your way through the halls of Morgrave University, being unsure of the way out, but knowing roughly that there's an exit around here somewhere. No karate parade this time, Hyman. Uh, uh, I've uh, I've worn out my fists this week. <laughs> Uh, so this takes you <laughs> PG. This, <laughs> this takes you about a quarter of an hour uh, to find your way out. When you do emerge, you, you you start to gain your bearings a little bit. Um, now, Laughing Steel's Emporium, the um, cast I mentioned, is located in the seventh tower district of the Upper Memphis Plateau. From your current position you know that that is within sort of 10 minutes walking distance. You also know that this is now on, again, more or less the opposite side of the city to the City of the Dead. Oh, good. So as you make your way uh, through this, Memphis is one of the more wealthier um wards of Sean, so it's a lot of um, very sort of high status folks milling about and um, sort of very very posh couture merchants in there and as you make your way into Little Zendrick, this is named after a distant island somewhat shrouded in myth and mystery potentially there are giants and dragons there um, Little Zendrick is a home of uh, sort of antiques and collectibles dealers who specialise in sort of elven artefacts from a period of antiquity several thousand years um, prior to sort of present day. And a lot of them sort of specialise in, oh, here is sort of um, replica um, clothing which may have been worn by the ancient Zendrick people. Here is furniture styled after the ancient Zendrick furniture arts. And after about a few minutes, you find uh, Laughing Steel's Emporium. It is a very small shop, um, sort of like um, it's a bay window at the front, little door, obligatory bell above the door. Um, and the sign on the front just says, Laughing Steel's Emporium. Uh, curios and antiquities bought and sold. Mm. 
We could sell my cure. He's an antique. I'm Thank not you. an antique. I'm not an antique at all. I'm only two years old. I'm the youngest one here. <laughs> Well, after you then, Mike, you <laughs> And so I just, I kind of just swing through the door and I go, hi! <laughs> As you do, there is uh, a human, male, long... <laughs> was that human with a question mark? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was human male with two question marks. Uh, human? <laughs> human, male, no female dwarf it's a uh, non-binary ooze actually you know what yeah sod it they are a, a humanoid figure made of a translucent jelly which color shifts <laughs> in the light this got weird oh. fast um they are however wearing a leather um sort of like smock tools arranged they in always pockets, are. um pair of goggles on their head and as they look up you can go Ah, hello there. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Lattingspiel. How can I help you? How are you Hi. doing this? My my name is Mike here. You look gooey. We need a thing. Oh, I'm sorry. What do we Bear need? Give me one moment. And they sort of make some adjustments oh. to a thing that looks like a wristwatch, and the sort of goo kind of drains down onto the floor and then evaporates away, revealing. A mid thirties human male with cropped black hair, brown eyes, and very rugged pink skin. So, sorry, I've been working on a, a safety suit. Uh, yes, how can I help you? Oh, now you're fleshy and boring. We're after a thingy, a thingy. What was it? Combustion engine, combustion engine, combustion engine, thingy, combustion engine. As soon as you say the words combustion engine, his face just kind of drops and goes, quickly, shut the door, shut the door, shut the door. Ah, uh, oh, okay, okay. So I, I go and shut the door. There. Now can we have the combustion engine thingy? Have you been sent by Castor? You know Castor? Okay. I have his order completed. It's an unusual request. But... One yeah, thing was. I have to make very importantly clear is that this is incredibly delicate. And we don't damage the casing. Exactly. Yeah. He reaches he under the that. desk and pulls up a metal cube with a smaller Ooh. metal cube held in the center. The smaller cube is glowing with this sort of purplish um, in a light, it's almost like a, a chunk of amethyst is held in a, a cube with then spines coming off from each of the corners, the larger cube on the outside. And you can see along each of the spurs are um, sort of little runic devices just etched into <coughs> metal on there. There we are. Now, as I say, it is very important that nothing happens to this. If the casing is broken, I'm not entirely sure what will happen, which is why I've had to put in the safety device onto the outer casing. Okay. Hmm. How should we carry it? I mean, it's perfectly capable, it's perfectly safe. You can put it into a pocket or a satchel. I would advise probably. What about in here? And I open like my chest. Like I open up a chest plate. Yes, yeah, that would that would certainly be uh, acceptable. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's Go absolutely on. fine. Go on. <laughs> Don't be shy. Go very on. Very carefully, sort of raise it up to the uh, the chest cavity that you've cleared out, and just pops it in. Ooh. <laughs> it tingles. It does tingle. It tingles a little more than you're expecting. Ooh. It tingles oh. quite a lot. Ah. It's uranium. <laughs> I'm going to need you to make me a constitution saving throw, please. Oh, good. Uh... You die. 
Is there any way we can step away from him, or is it too late? Uh, okay, that is an eight, Calmbro. <laughs> an eight. Yeah. Uh, so, no. I'm going to need everyone other than my cure to make me a dexterity saving throw, please. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think, I've just, I think I've just blown my cure up. It was only a matter of time. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving this. You've killed us all. Yep, sure have. Not with my cat-like reflexes. Oh, let me have a look through my <laughs> other characters. See what my reserves are. <laughs> So, let's Yay. roll down the list. Uh, Daisy, what did you get? 19. Hyman? 19. Callus? 5. Uh, <laughs> 18. <laughs> okay. So, Callus, you take the full brunt of this blast of energy that suddenly... I love how he out. takes the full brunt of this energy. <laughs> He takes the brunt of the wave of energy that emanates uh -huh. out from Mycure, Um, which means two seconds. <clears throat> so, Callus, you take 75 points of force damage. <laughs> so I'm dead. Are you? Yeah. Uh, well, I would. Uh, my D&D Beyond is, is broke, but I'm pretty sure I have 31 HP, so yes. I would die. You're just that sounds about right. I, yeah, I, I can't see my character. She is just dead. Okay. So uh, um, please bear with me. Have a look. The... <laughs> I wonder if I can get it off Twitch. Oh, yeah, I can. Mike, you're, oh, you you also good. take 75 points of damage. All right. So I'm like a lot of my cures right now, like strewn across the store. <laughs> cool. The rest of you who succeeded on your saving throws take half damage. Oh god, that still knocks me out. Whoa, what? <laughs> so those of you that made your saving throws... TPK! Take 37 points of damage. Right. Um, good night, dice roll fan. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Start re-rolling the characters. Callus, you have 31 hit points. Thank you. Uh, then I am definitely yeah, dead. I am well dead. Like, I have, one I shot, have... not even downed. Yeah. yeah. As is my cure, I think. I had 26. On... <laughs> yeah, so we oh, we are slain. That is uh, I will kill. update my sheet whenever it comes back. Um, hang on. Where's Badrak and his eggs when you need him? 75. <laughs> We're just He's making used sure. to taking internal damage. Yeah, I'm dead. Have... Yeah, I'm dead. I've put it in D&D Beyond. My cure is dead. Did anyone Apparently survive? Oh, uh... Apparently I've got death saves. Oh, well, I asked you earlier if you were getting harsher. I wasn't quite expecting I'm on death saves. insta death so early on. Yeah, I'm here for it. Ah, that's fortunate. My character, sh my character list has just come up. Which one can I have now? <laughs> Which one haven't I played? So as this explosive wave just rips through the shop, um, Callus, you're immediately slammed into a wall and you see nothing you more. <laughs> Mike, you, you feel your entire body ripped apart and your vision goes blank. The rest of you just take this blast of force energy straight to the face. There's this purple wave just ripples out and completely knocks you unconscious. You all then see the same thing. Except Completely for white void. No sense of air moving around. You can feel something that might be the floor under your feet. And you're all standing in a line behind a couple of brass pillars with a little red velvet rope strung across. And standing behind it is a halfling with a little tweed coat on and a bowler hat and a clipboard. 
they just look up, look down the line, catch Notad's eyes and say, Oh, back again, are we? You know I love it here. Oh. Ah. Well, um, I'm terribly sorry, but there appears to have been some sort of mistake. I, I can't let you in just yet. Still not ready. Please. Well, it's a bit of a strange one. I'm sure you'll work it out. But I've been cooking up a right storm. <laughs> the halfling snaps their fingers and your vision goes complete white. Oh, that was good. And you hear the tinnitus ringing again. And then you hear voices. So as you can see, this is the last component we need, and then we can start to go into full production. Oh, oh my god, it's Groundhog Day. So, we uh, are an edge of tomorrow, but... Sort of, yeah, we'll definitely call in some sort of loop. So, uh, if you could make your way down to uh, uh, the Laughing Steel Emporium and collect the final part, that would be lovely. Right As away! You around, you what are is this?! <laughs> You're back in Castor's office at Morgrave University. And that's where we're going to take a break. Uh, of course we are. So we'll be back in about 10 minutes to pick this up where we left off. Uh, of course we are. Do it. <laughs>
and we're back. So, you found yourselves back in Castar's office. Both Castar and Alira are looking over the blueprints on the table in front of them. And Castar looks up, hands you over a note and says, If you can uh, make your way to Laughing Steel's Emporium and just retrieve this part for me, I've commissioned it, uh, then we should be able to carry on with the first stage of testing. But we did. Oh, excellent! Uh, could you, uh, could could you uh, hand me the uh, the 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 casing? No, uh, thank you. We died and have to do it again. Let me check. Uh, can I uh, rummage through my chest cavity so, like, I crack it open and I go for a cheeky little rummage? Uh, you yep. find your chest cavity is as empty. As you would expect it to be. Wonderful. Yeah, unfortunately, I expected it to be empty as well. I didn't expect the thing to be there. Maybe I should. Have. <laughs> we, we um, we remember every detail of what's just happened, do we? Yep. As we don't have like memory wipes, we nope. just. What is this? What? Hmm. Huh. Okay, I'm just going to say to Caster. So, we've been speaking prior to now for the last 30 minutes about the internal combustion engine. We haven't yes. just arrived. No, we've spent the last half an hour or so going over these plans, and I've explained to you that we are just waiting on one final component before we can begin first stage testing. What day is it? It's it's Tuesday. And to the DM, was it Tuesday in our original? When you mm. left for the City of the Dead, it would have been Wednesday. <sighs> and yeah. I think we just need to give this another go. Castor just kind of looks at you and goes, "Are you, are you feeling all right?" No, we've been smoking something. Right. Do you feel that you're sober enough for a very simple collection assignment? Because we do. Are there any alternatives? Hits. I mean. You could outright refuse a request from the chief advisor to Lady Alira Boromar. I would her. never do such a thing. I yeah. lay my life down for her. You are so very sweet. Please. Goddamn no tad simp. She steps over and takes your hand and goes, Please, collect this and bring it back to me safely. Have you got any advice on how best to transport such an item? Well, I did advise Mr. Laughingsteel that the device could be uh, potentially slightly volatile, so we've ensured that it is uh, contained within a, a protective casing. What kind of casing? Do you have such a thing we can take with us? Well, Mr. Laughingsteel should have built the, uh, the shifter into a, a, a casing to protect it for transportation. Well, let me tell you, it didn't work. What, what do you mean it didn't work? Well, I ended up all over the shop. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. I think that's And I it, don't it? like being blown up. The general rule. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine anyone would in particular. It wasn't fun. I shouldn't believe it would be. I think let's give it another go and... Um, uh, Get let's... back in? No, 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 no. <laughs> well, let's ask a few questions no. of the shopkeeper before we take it from him to make sure he has done these things. You're going in first. Fine. Mm. Okay. So it takes you about 10 minutes now. You're somewhat more familiar with the way out of the university. 
and you make your way over to Little Zendrick and you find Laughing Steel's Emporium. You go through the door, the bell tinkles. Jeffrey Laughing Steel is there with the blue safety suit on. <laughs> Removes it. Says, Yes! How how can I help you folks? I preferred you when you were gooey. I mean, it does make it a little <laughs> bit more difficult to talk and hear through, but uh, I, I'll leave it off for now. How can, how can I help you? What is that suit for? Oh, it's, uh, it's simply for uh, my own protection. Um, some of the artifacts we deal with from Zendrik can be a little bit um, <laughs> excitable, uh, so we, we tend to employ uh, a certain number of safety procedures when dealing with them. Can I get me one of those suits? I'm afraid this one's oh, still, still a bit of a prototype, but uh, I mean, if I take some details, I can certainly contact you when I've, I've got something a bit more uh, factory ready. We've come to collect something for uh, the Boromar clan. I'll get the door. Candle, is his name? Candle? Gandalf? No. Something like that? There was a anyone, man. Anyone? Anyone know his Gandalf. name? Gandalf. That guy. Uh, some sort of engine? As soon as he hears the word engine, his face drops. He's like, that door is quite shut, isn't it? Yes, yes. <laughs> Good, wonderful. wonderful. Uh, I have Mr. Castar's order here. Castar. Reaches under the, the desk and pulls out the metal casing, the cube within the cube. Lays it down. Now, as per Mr. Castar's instructions, I have made sure that there is a safety uh, built into it, so uh, it should be fine to carry it on your person. Doesn't work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Could, Doesn't work. Could we employ you to carry it for us? I mean, it definitely works. I, I certainly could, uh, if uh, Mr. Castar is willing to compensate me for my time I'm sure that'll be fine oh, wonderful then uh, let me just gather my things and leaves the uh, cube on the table heads off to the back room and you can hear him rummaging around as he does you hear the shatter of glass Oh God. and the thud of something metal on the floor. I'm going to need you all to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Uh, if I fail it again. Mm. I rolled an eight. Ten for me. Robots are kind of clunky. Who knew? Okay, so an 8 and a 10. Hyman? 11. 11, Callus? Team. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> and sorry, Nothad, what did you get? 13. Who have I missed? Me. Oh, what did you guess? <laughs> 13. You know, just, just to mix things up a bit. We are all dead. I think you... we're all dead anyway, weren't we? Have enough time to see a metal cylinder come through the window and roll across the floor. Oh. And you're all engulfed in an enormous fireball. Treachery. Your vision goes white, and you find yourself in a white void, standing in a line behind a velvet rope, on the other side of which is a halfling in a bowler hat with a tweed jacket. Hi, halfling with the bowler hat. It's me again. Yes, yeah, send us back. Thank you. Oh. Goodbye. Twice in one day. Someone is eager. Am I there with them, or do I go somewhere else? All of you are there. Oh, okay. So I do have sentience. I have. Ah, oh, Michael has a soul. It's nice. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm glad to see that you're excited. You were alive. Uh, well. But like, You're a real this is boy. a fleshy thing. <laughs> well, 
I must say, I don't make the rules. Um, but unfortunately, I still can't let you in. Back you go. Okay. Bye. Thanks for telling me about my soul. You find yourself back in Castor's office at Morgrave University. So if you Here we go again. head on down and uh, collect this part for me, yes. that would be wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. If you just go to Laughing Stills Emporium, it's located yes. in Little... Why don't they come here? Well, I'm sure Mr. Laughing Steel has very busy. He has many things to curate and, and tinker with. I'm sure if you compensate him accordingly, he'll be fine with it. Well, if Lady Alira thinks it would be best to have the artificer in charge bring his creation to us, I'm sure we can compensate him for his time and provide you as bodyguards. Uh, Alira, my sweet. If you care for me at all, please do not send us on this quest. She comes over and takes your hand and goes, Come, come now, no doubt. This will be a trivial task for someone of your talents. Oh, why oh, are you... She says, come on! Please. A jet, of, a jet of steam just, like, pops out the top of my head. Please, bring Mr. Laughing Steel and his work to us. I would consider okay. it a personal favour. How far away is this place from here? Is it within 30 feet? No. Damn it. I've got a misty step. <laughs> okay. So you're all fairly familiar with the way out now, so it only takes you about five minutes to get out of the university. You make your way to Little Zendrick. You make your way to Laughing Steel's Emporium. Door opens, doorbell rings. Jeffrey Laughing Steel is there. Drops the safety suit. Ah, how can I help you folks today? Hi, we're from Castle, Candle, Carol, whatever his name is. I'll oh, get the door. Car. Engine, door, close. Okay. Uh, I, I go to the door, I shut the door, and I go to the window. <laughs> okay. What are you doing at the window? Uh, I bring Hyman over. I'm on my way. Hyman, come here. Yes, I master. I need you. I want you to punch the metal thing right back where it came from when it arrives. Put that thing back where it came from also help me. Well, I like punching, so let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Hyman and Mike, you're, you're both keeping watch at the On window. On guard at the window, yeah. Okay. So, no, Tad, again, as soon as you, you mention the word engine, Jeffrey's face drops, checks the door is shut, brings it out <laughs> onto the desk. <laughs> yes, this is uh, suitable for transport. Uh, you... Take You're coming with us. <laughs> well, you will be compensated. It's all been time. arranged. Oh, well. If Pack I'm your stuff, but quickly, 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 quickly. For my time, then that's uh, yes. Not, no not time to go into the back room. No back room. Uh, Stay in our sight. Do not leave our sight. You're actually being paid more for the faster you are. Would you believe? Let's um, go. <laughs> did I cast Mage Hand? I don't want to do anything with it, but if some fucker tries to throw something through a window, I'd like to sort of try and catch it. Up. No, yep. we're punching it away. We're That's absolutely punching fine. it away. I'm well, ready to punch the event that, that they miss the punch in it, then I've got a chance of catching it with Mage Hand. Oh, but just you... honestly, <laughs> it's, it's sort of in the middle of the so room. Just, just, to... just so I'm clear, we've got Hyman, Batter Up, My Cure as Umpire. <laughs> And you're just there with your mage hand catches miss. Backstop. Basically is back yeah. Yeah. Backstop. Okay. Next. That's fine. I will allow it and I will grant the three of you inspiration for the baseball yeah. analogy. Hell bup, yeah. So as you're preparing, um Jeffrey's says, Well, I I'm Happy to come with you, but I do need something to uh, to put this into. I can't just be carrying it around. Oh, you know, I don't have any pockets. I, I'll be right back. I'll go with Quickly. him. I'm going with him. I'm going with him. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, Notad, you follow him to... pressing any buttons. No, Notad follows him to the 
back room you see him take off his apron hang it up and grab a, an overcoat and a small leather satchel and get ready to to head back out Callus, what are you up to whilst uh this is all going on well, i sort of keep watch out the window can i or can i stand outside the door okay. yes I... yep I was going to say, can I really quickly ask how many other entrances and exits there are? Because so far I've got the door we came in and and the window where someone threw something through. Are there other, are there other windows? Um, so there's only the one uh, window at the front of the shop. This is part of like a row of terraces. Yeah. So there is the window at the front. You can see that there is a staircase going upstairs um, and a door at the back leading out to the sort of the back street okay. that's along um, the terrace. I don't know if there are be able to do this but if i've got mage hand out as a cantrip can i ready in action if i need to to drop mage hand and throw chromatic orb at the door in the event that someone i deem a threat comes through um i'll allow it yes yeah um let me just check does ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. yeah that's absolutely fine because um, casting mage hand doesn't require concentration. No, no, it's just, just a cantrip. You just summon a hand that lasts for a minute. So yeah, you can summon the hand um, and ready up uh, a spell. That's absolutely fine. Um, uh, Callus, you say you're heading outside to. Yes, keep an eye out for stuff. Okay, um, can you make me a perception check, please? This is gonna go well. <laughs> That's Good a natural not. one. Do one. not fluff okay, it. No. Did you even realise there's a door? <laughs> <laughs> I walk into the door. Wall. I just stare at the wall. <laughs> yeah, when, you, when you said you were going to go watch the door, you've just gone outside, shut the door, turned around and stared intently at the door. <laughs> oh, God. Do you know You're just staring at a tapestry on the wall of a paint at the outside. This is why we can't have that. I just got distracted by something fancy. For the love of fuck. So, what you fail to see outside, <laughs> probably because you're looking the other way while it happens, is uh, three figures. Great. In black and purple robes. Feathers? No, no feathers, no visible flesh. Hyman. Hi. You notice these three individuals standing on the far side of the street, but don't have time to immediately do anything because you see the middle one pull out a metal sphere and just huck it straight Grenade. across the street at the window. Ba -da 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 -da. I stick out this door. Oh, dear. So it's heading towards the window. It hasn't shattered through yet. What are you going to do? Well, I'd like to uh, deflect missile. Oh, okay. that's fine. I grab it and <clears throat> eat it back out again. <laughs> this is going to be some dope monk shit here now. <laughs> yeah. Do, 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 do. Let's. I think it has to hit you before you can deflect missile. Yeah, you are right. But it's going to hit us anyway, so basically... <laughs> it's waiting right there. <laughs> we know it's going to blow up. You know what? For the benefit of dope monk shit, I'm going to allow this. Oh, man. Um, that's why we love you as a DM. Let me just find <laughs> specifically how it works. So you can use reaction to deflect or catch Just catch the hit blazer. Okay, so we'll, we'll say that due to your proximity to the window, you are effectively hit by this. Yeah. Okay. And as it shatters through the window, you effortlessly catch this orb. Now, you do have the option to spend a key point to make a ranged attack with it. Well, it'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? I mean... Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> nice. He is the Highlander. There can only be one. 
Go for it. Um, so if you can make me a ranged attack roll, please. Ooh, okay. Uh... So for you, this would be a um, basically a straight dex check, I believe. Yeah, it would be with... Because it counts as a monk weapon. Because it quote-unquote counts as a monk weapon, this would be with your proficiency. So it's a d20 plus 5 for you, please. Jesus. I keep forgetting how <laughs> amazing Yeah, monks. so it's... Just, just... So it's a d20 roll, plus your dexterity modifier, plus your proficiency modifier. Sweet, so it is a five then, yeah? Yep. Uh, we're going to have to do it on D&D. No, we're going to have to do it on Avray, because... Uh... Let it be so known just, that my roll... cure is cheering all the while through this. Roll a d20 and add five to it. <laughs> I got that 20! Hey! <laughs> That'll be 25, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Not only like are cool. amazing. So there is this moment where as this orb comes through the window, you catch it as it falls through, and then make the sort of spin maneuver, continuing to hold the momentum of this orb, and then just backhand release it through the window with such force nice. that it just beams the mm. middle one of these three figures on the far side of the street. The other two immediately run for their lives as this middle figure is just engulfed in an enormous fireball. Yay! Nice. Fireball. And at this point, I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative, please. Yeah. Just before that time, can I just turn around and look at Mike and go, smoke? Yes, smoke. you can. And if you, smoke, didn't you, have, if you didn't have Did initiative you cut before... You would have it now. Well, you know, or definitely got it twice. Inspiration, even. I know what you meant. <laughs> and if you didn't get inspiration, you'd have had mine. <laughs> Is that inspiration or admiration? I'll take both. You'll you'll get both. Oh, you'll get both. <laughs> okay, so that's. Initiative. Okay, so uh, start with Daisy, please. Oh, uh, seven. Seven, fantastic. Hyman? Fourteen. Fourteen. Callus? Twelve. Twelve. Mike, you're. 14. 14, and no out. 14. 14. Oh, copycat. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, fine. Okay. So, whilst we run that in, let's have a look how that's, that's all played out lovely so running order is hyman you'll be up first followed by notad and mike your then callus then daisy who have i missed hyman notad mike your callus i think i think that's all for two three four. no it's five yes yeah, yeah. Five of you. sorry i'm were you counting yourself in the chat? You know what? I might have been. <laughs> okay, so first up, you've got these uh, figures across the street. Um, Callus, you immediately turn and see the middle one consumed in fire. And with a certain weary pang of recognition, you recognise the robes that they're wearing. These are the same individuals that tried to set fire to your head when you recovered Derek from the train. What ah, a... okay. What a shower of pricks. And... Fucking Derek. <laughs> as a... Uh, as sort of an ode to a, a familiar favourite, one of them raises their hand and casts Firebolt directly at your face. 
Um, that is uh, 16 to hit. Uh, I'll use Arcane Deflection and add Force or whatever this is going to be. Actually, that, that just adds to my AC, so it'll be 17, so it'll miss. Okay, so yeah, so as you see this coming, you're like, oh, not again, buddy. And raise your hand and a wall of arcane energy just pew, pings the uh, the fireballs yep. off nice. in out of its direction. Excellent. Um, the other one has seen... Oh, sorry. Um, I'm also going to need you, Callus, to make... Actually, no. No, you don't. I'm going to need uh, Hyman. Mm. The other one raises their hand and you see this huge ball of lightning energy come flying towards you. Um, and that is a 10 to hit, so I believe that misses. It certainly does. It does. So yeah, still a little bit distracted by seeing their friend on fire. Their aim isn't quite as true as they hoped, and it goes wide. So, uh, next up then, we have got Hyman. Notad, you're on deck. Well, I'm, well I'm, I, I don't know, you know about you guys, but I'm extremely angry. You know, I would be. I've watched, I've watched my, my master die twice. Um, and then threaten life third time. So... In in a typical monk fashion, I'm just going to jump out the window, try that on. Okay. Maybe not too high up. No, you are ground floor, so this would be like there's a a bit of a bay to the window, so it's maybe like a foot and a half off the floor. So this is like easily vault and dive through window. So I dive through. I'm going to go to the one that shot at me. Okay. Um, can you just make me an athletics check, please? Glad you asked. Cause that's efficient. That bad boy. But oh my god. Um, a six, yeah. Can't always get the look, I suppose. That's fine. You biff it a little bit, um, and uh, you take two points of slashing damage from bits of broken glass as you dive through the window. Not quite as, as gracefully as you'd hoped. Probably not. Um, and, yeah, and then I suppose I'm going to give him a good old wham-bam. Wham-bam, thank you, ma'am. So I'm going to hit him with the uh, thunder and lightning. Okay. Is very, very bright. Thunder. Right. Lightning. First strike, Tom, 19. 19 to hit. hits. With a damage of 6. Okay. So the first strike comes in, and bam, you feel it connect um, straight into the torso. And they get knocked back ever so slightly. A little bit unsteadied by this sudden and violent attack. And then here comes the lightning. Button. Oh, uh, yeah. Momentum carried me a bit there. I've got a six to hit. I That's... think you rolled a one. Is that a six? Did you say? Yeah. yeah. I rolled a one, I see, but I got a plus five uh, hit. So yeah, so the second strike comes in, but your first strike was with enough like surprise and alarm that it just sort of unsteadied them, and the second strike just connects with the air in the space that they were falling backwards through. Appreciate it. Anything else from yourself? What I would like to do, so I'm guessing I'm, I'm now stood in between my comrades and that particular um, sexy bad guy. Yep. I'm just assuming it's sexy. No, it would not be. I'm going to just step to the side a little bit. So I'm still melee, but I just want to move to the left. Like, so like clockwise around. Them. Correct. Okay. okay. So that's fine. So as you look out, so as you were looking out from the window, there was the on fire individual in the center. There's one to yep. the left that had thrown a firebolt at Callus, and there's the one to the right that threw the orb at you. So you've stepped to there, to your left. As you look yes. at them, so you are now there, right. you are now exposing them to the shop window, and you are sort of stood between them and the burning remains of their associates. You are bang on. There we go. Cool. Right. Uh, so next up, then we have got uh, da, 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 Notad. Hola. 
you're up. Mike, you're, you're on deck. No, Tav, what are you doing? So you're currently in like... the back room, but you've heard this commotion. Yes. I require to run out of said back room into the jaws of the fight. Yep. So you're running friendly. outside of the shop. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah. So into a place where I'm going to have enough room to attack. So yes, I so guess the, just the, the, the bay window is probably easily enough for three of you to stand comfortably abreast in. And it is now broken, right? So it is like completely abreast. It is completely shattered. Out. <laughs> okay, I will run there, and I would like to cast scorching ray, please. Okay. Uh, for the people at home, Scorching Ray does what, sorry? Uh, creates three rays of fire and hurls them at targets within range. You nice. can hurl them at one target or several. Okay, so uh, how do you want to allocate these? There's three of them, right? There was. There is oh, there was two of them. One, one of them is very much on fire. Um, one of them has currently taken a beating from Hyman, and the other one has failed to hit Callus with a firebolt. Okay, so two rays to go to the one that tried to hit Callus, and one ray to the one that took a beating from Hyman. Okay, so we'll start with the one that tried to hit Callus. If you can make me two ranged spell attacks, please. Yep. The first one is 23 to hit. That hits. You can go do you want damage, or do you want yep. damage? Just yeah. draw me off the damage as we go. Uh, so that's seven damage. Cool. Then we have oh nine to hit. So the first one hits, and you see that the uh, this this ray just shoots out and catches them in square in the chest and starts to burn away at their their robes. And as they're frantically trying to put it out, they just manage to avoid the second ray hitting them. Darn it. Oh, 11 to hit for the other guy. Uh, the second one misses, unfortunately. Still a little bit unsteadied um, by Hyman's forceful blow. Darn. Okay. Um, anything else from yourself? Bonus. No, that cool. is me done. Uh, don't forget to knock off spell slots where necessary. I have done it, yes. There you go, see, you're learning. Right, my cure, you're up. Callus, you're on deck. Okay, Um, I have a question. Are they, how far apart would you say these two uh, wizardy people are, these two spellcasters? From each other, they're probably about 20 feet apart. Um, 20. They have got um, Hymen in the middle of them. So if you've got draw, Hyman in them. Yeah, so if you were to draw a straight line between them, there'd be one on the left and then about twenty foot, uh, about 15 foot space, Hyman, and then five foot space, and then the second one. Okay. Just do it, Master. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never. No. <laughs> um, let me just check this quickly then. Uh, okay. So I pull. I my eyes start glowing red. Okay. And they start. And they start becoming brighter and brighter. And I hold up my two my like my index fingers, if you will, and my middle fingers together on both hands, and they start glowing with the same energy. Yep. And then I launch them. At, and I point them both at the uh, the spellcasters in question, and I cast a twinned Abanaz's Scorcher. Okay. Abanaz's Scorcher. Ah, uh, cool. And I use a sorcery point in order to make it a twin spell, which means I can hit two people with the same spell. So you fire up the Abanaz's Scorcher finger guns, fire at one and then fire at the other. Yes, basically, Lovely. yeah. Lovely. Cool. So, um, da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Agnes are Scorcher. They need a deck saving throw. Okay, so as you fire at the one on the left, 
Um, what are they looking to beat as a deck saving throw? 14. 14, okay. So the first one spots it coming and steps out of the way. The second mm -hmm. one, uh, not so much. So the one next to, to Hyman takes this straight to the face. Cool. <laughs> Crazy. All right, so, so I will roll my damage. Yep. <laughs> okay. So I got 19. So, so, yep, so I deal 9 damage to the guy who dodged it. Unless you want to give me the extra one. Uh, sorry, two... I'll give you the extra one. I bet you no. will. Sorry, I'm just checking what the metamagic on twin spell is. So, the first one dodges it, but they still take some of the heat of mm -hmm. this, this line of flame that just shoots out from your left-hand finger gun. So they so take half nine, as much damage. So they take yeah. half damage. So they take uh, nine damage mm -hmm. from that. Uh, the second one takes the full brunt of it, though. It just takes 19 to the face. And you see Hyman just effortlessly sort of stand back to the ready position as this jet of flame just rushes out from the shop floor and just catches yeah. this. I probably, I probably said something along the lines of... Hi, man! Duck, please! <coughs> Excellent. The spell's ruptured from my fingers. Um, I'm going to use Tempestuous Magic as well to fly through the window and just hover there. Yep. Okay, Menacingly. So looming, hovering above the storefronts. Yeah, with glowing, angry eyes. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. So yeah, you're going full raging magneto above the shop I'm, fronts. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not to be fucked with, basically. Right. Yeah. Anything else from yourself? No, not really. Thank you. No worries. So, uh, Callus, you're up. Daisy, you're on deck. Okay. Uh, I am gonna just launch a chromatic orb at the one that threw a firebolt at me. Okay, and what flavour of chromatic are we doing there? Uh, hmm. Oops, rolled that. That was stupid. Uh, I'm going to go with poison, poison, I think. Okay. Um, so, yep, if you can make me a ranged spell attack, please. That is 24 to hit. That definitely hits. Roll me some poison damage, please. Uh, that is 20. Jesus! Okay. Um, yeah, if you could just describe what a, a poison-flavoured chromatic orb looks like from Callus, please. Um, it sort of spins the uh, diamond round and it just becomes this green sort of blob that just flies towards... I get the impression it's a bit more like acid than poison. In its nature, just acid splats. and poison are two right. separate things. If that helps, very well. Then it is poisonous liquid until it reaches them, then explodes into a gas, like a poison. cluster bomb in front of them. Poison coloured. So yeah, you, you basically get this thing about the size of a, a, a decent sized grapefruit up here, and you just huck it across the street, and just poof, explodes in front of them and they sort of double over coughing as this poisonous gases start to fill their lungs and burn them from the inside they're not they're not looking well um you can see you can't see their face but you can see that they are like coughing up blood at this point um anything else from yourself uh no fantastic so daisy you're up and then we'll be back to the top of the round. Um, so one of them's basically dead by the sounds of things. So uh, you can see from the uh, from your position in the backstop of the former baseball arrangements, um, the one on the left is now currently coughing up blood. The one on the right is very much um, dealing with the effects of being on fire and being hit by uh, Mike Yor's flaming finger guns. Yeah. Um, I'll go for the one on the. I don't know if this is accurate, but in my head, as I'm looking at them, the one on the right is the one that um 
is in melee with um with Hyman, Hyman. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um I'm going to cast Maximilian's Earth and Grasp on the one on the left. Okay. Um, do you want me to read it out to you? Yes, please. Uh, I yes. Want to know what it is. Yeah. You, so <coughs> you choose a five. Encountered this before. It, it's a big fit, a big hand. Uh, you choose a five foot square unoccupied space on the ground that you can see within range. A medium hand made from compacted soil rises there and reaches for one creature you can see within five feet of it. The target must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 2d6 bludgeoning and is restrained by the, sp by the spell's duration. As an action, you can cause the hand to crush the restrained target who must make a strength saving throw. And then you take the same amount again. And uh, to break it, you just have to make a strength check against it. Okay, so, and you're aiming for the one on the left that's coughing up blood? Yes. Yep, please. okay. It's a DC strength, so it's not DC, it's a strength save of 13. Strength save of 13, okay. So as you summon the uh, arcane energy, you just sort of punch your hand into the floor of the shop, and you see this sort of ripple travel across the street, and this copy of your hand just bursts out of the ground and grabs hold of their leg as they're currently trying to recover from the effects of Callus's poison attack. Um, okay. If you can make me a 2d6 roll for bludgeoning damage, please. Seven. Seven. So yeah, as they do, they have to stop briefly and scream in pain as this fist made of dirt and cobblestones has just come up and grabbed hold, and you can see that it's like putting some serious... Well, you can feel it because it's, it's your hand, but the rest of it, you can see that it's putting some serious pressure on their leg. Um, um, so, so they the are now restrained. Yeah, I should say. They are. Um, I think that's all I can do at the moment. So, because it's, uh, it's a concentration spell. Yep. Uh, that's oh, fine. Hang on. One second. Ah, I've clicked on the wrong one. Sorry. All right. Yeah, it is a concentration up to one minute. Just so you know. That's fine. Okay. So yeah, if you lose, if you cast another spell that requires concentration, you will lose concentration on that. Um, I don't think I can do anything, can I? I have to concentrate on keeping the spell. So normal activity like... such as moving and attacking doesn't interfere with concentration. Oh, okay, I'd like to move closer to them, please. Yep. As far as I, thirty feet. So however That's, far. You basically, yeah, you'd 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 be right upon them. Okay. Um, okay. I'll end my go fantastic so yeah they are they mm. are not looking well for themselves so uh, top of the round then so the first um, figure with the robes currently <laughs> being held in place whilst they're coughing up the remains of their internal organs uh, decides to make one last ditch attempt to um do something about the terrible situation. Um, trying to take revenge on Callus, it's going to throw the same spell back at you. No. Um, is your? <laughs> I was going to say, is your spell shield? Is that a, that's a reaction one turn thing, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So it that is. will have ended. No, okay. Yes. Um, so they've rolled a 20 to hit. That hits me. Okay. There's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> okay. If you die again, uh, I'm going to. You take. <laughs> yeah. You see this. this uh, what you immediately recognized as a poison, poison colored grapefruit ball come hurtling towards you. Not anticipating it, you take it to the chest and you take 18 points of poison damage. Oh, Touché. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> In addition, as they cast it, um, Daisy, you feel this sort of wave of energy pulse off of them. I need you to make a constitution saving throw, please. Okay, thank you.
Oh dear. I failed. Okay. Fortunately, it's not that bad. They're quite weakened. You take two points of force damage. Oh, is that it? Okay. And I need you to make another constitution saving throw to maintain concentration on Maximilian's Earth and Grass. Fuck off. Uh, five. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, sorry, was that... Wow. F- no, sorry, I've misread that. So, um, yeah, Maximilian's Grasp is broken. Uh, yeah, okay. But this... They are... They're not looking in a good state. And they're going to try and run away from your melee range. Okay. Break their legs. This does not sound good. I am out of... What's the word? Actions at this moment in time. Do you have a reaction? Oh, have I got an opportunity... An attack of opportunity? Yes. Um, okay. Then I will... Can I use an ice knife as an attack of opportunity, or does it have to be a melee weapon? Um... So it's one melee attack. Ice knife would count as a spell, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you might say that. In which case, I'll grab my battle axe and try and hit him. Go for it. Roll to hit, please. Oh, God's sake. Ten. Ten. Unfortunately, they're a little bit... Uh, the, uh, a little bit the cons- nimbler. <laughs> yeah. A little bit nimbler than you were expecting. You were hoping that uh, the earthen grass would hold them there just a little bit longer. They managed to get past you just before the uh, the battle axe lands true. Okay, so that's their turn over and done with. Over to the second one, who has just finished putting out the flames on them, and they've drawn a short sword, and they're going to go for Hyman. Being go closest for it. To them. Um, so they get to make two attacks with short sword. The first one is a five to hit, which I assume misses. Um, yep. Yep. The second one is a 20 to hit. That hit. That is a a dirty 20. So, as you feel the sword slice into your robes, you take five points of slashing damage. And an additional five points of poison damage. As you see the blade comes through, you can see the serrated edge. There is a a sickly green tint to it. And you immediately feel the burn of the poison in the wound across your chest. Um, They are out of any further actions. So we come to Hyman. Notad, you're on deck. Before Hyman starts, I shout out... Hyman! And I start getting angry. Feel your feel your um your emotion surge through me. Look look we're connected. Um ooh. think I'm gonna introduce the guy in front of me uh to my five knuckles. Go for okay. it. Giggity. Get it right. Oh, you mother trickster. <laughs> it's an eight, Tom. So the first one, first attack misses, unfortunately. This time, as as that's not been successful, I'm going to sort of do like a weird like spin on my left hand. Yep. Foot comes over, and it <laughs> misses. That poison's done some damage. So the second strike misses as well. Oh, yeah. There's no point me giving you the score on that, Tom, because I know it missed. <laughs> no worries. So, yeah, the poison is starting to slow you, and whilst you're trying to focus on controlling your body and, and fighting off the poison, it's slowing your movements just to the point at which you're not able to quite connect everything through there. And at the same time, you can feel this rage from your master surging through you, coupled with your own insensate outrage that they dared to use such an underhanded tactic as poisons. I'm disgusted. 
this this guy is the lowest of the low. You, no honourable combatants would use would use poison. It's cheating of the highest order. Um, anything else from yourself? I think that's that's me done. Okay, so we come to Notad. Mike, you're you're on deck. Firebolt. I like the way I did that. Thank you. Inspiration from me. Thanks. Um, DM want to okay. add yep. to it? <laughs> <laughs> you know if, if Hyman wants to grant you his inspiration, you can take it. You know it's fine because you know I never use inspiration because I always forget I've got it instantly. So. Just use it now. Um, I'll give you mine. Go. Aww, this is cute. So yeah, fireball on whichever it is most alive. So you've got the one on the left trying to leg it. The one on the right that has drawn swords and gone up against Hyman. Mano oh. uh, Dudo. Definitely legging it one then. We're not letting any prisoners get away. That's fine. Okay. Roll to hit please. Ugh, 12 to hit. Use your inspiration. Yeah. Do do I get to hear whether that hits before I use it or I have to use it before, don't I? You can re... So now that you've announced what you've got, you can choose to use your inspiration to re-roll it if you wish. Before do I have to go with the re-roll if... Oh, I don't... 12 isn't enough, is it? Let's be honest. Okay. Let's just give it a try and use that inspiration. Oh my fucking god. Worth. I rolled in that one plus four, so I got oh, five. Oh. Okay. Unfortunately, Nine. the firebolt does go wide. Would 12 have hit? You'd have to have found out. Got well, that. Considering it's the highest, <laughs> you know what? I'll be generous. It was the highest number you rolled and it didn't hit. Okay, cool. Okay. Anything else from yourself? Other than swearing. Uh, uh, hmm. Just checking. No. No, I'm good. Thank okay. you. Right. So, um, end of your turn. We come to Mike. You're, you're up. Callus, you're on deck. Okay. Oh, let's see if I can do this. Um, I think I can, though. <clears throat> what are you thinking? Um, right, so... Uh, my eyes glow yellow this time. Okay. And these sparks start flying from the outer edge, from the irises. Irises, sorry. Of where my eyes are, there's like crackling and the clouds start forming in the sky and they're pitch black. And I raise up to the top of my ten feet in the air. <laughs> yep. And I'm I'm like raging thoroughly. Yep. And I cast and I uh and I snap my fingers at the person who was attacking Hyman, and I catch him I will be right on back. the edge of this ten-foot ball of shatter that I cast. Nice. Okay, so you're so you're intentionally casting this to the other side of Hyman, so as to not catch him. Yeah, yeah. So I, as I snap my fingers, there's like a sudden loud ringing noise, painfully intense, and it erupts. From the point that I was aiming for. Okay, so that's a con saving throw? It's a con saving throw. Okay, so as you snap your fingers, there is this incredibly loud ringing noise. Um, Hyman, because of his sort of, because of your connection, can feel the spell cast coming and takes a step back, smirks, and just puts his fingers in his ears. Yeah, um, that sounds accurate. <laughs> that's what I usually do. Their opponent. Not so, uh, not so keyed into what's going on. Um, no. What are they looking to beat as a con save? Fourteen, and I'm shouting, "Get your hands off my Hyman!" Snap, Net. boom! Oh, it's oh, wow. 
They rolled a 13. Oh, my. Mm. So that's a okay. failure. So roll me up some damage, please. Cool. So that is... Cool. Wait, can I also... Uh, I'm going to use Empowered Spell. Okay. Which means I can spend one sorcery point to reroll up to four of the dice. Okay. So I'll do that again. I'm going to reroll all of so... them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're all shit. If that's okay by you. That's absolutely fine, yes. Yeah, but that will Lovely. use up all of your yeah, uh, but... sorcery points. That's it. Okay, Worth. yeah. Cool. And I do 12 damage. Okay, so as you snap your fingers and Hyman gets into position, standing back, covering his ears, um, you see this sort of wave of... As the air is kind of displaced with the force of this sound, you see it sort of catch this guy in the back and they just spread eagle ever so slightly and stumble forward and they're now clutching at their head and you can see that they are in a lot of pain at this point. They're still standing but they're looking none the best for us. Oh, there he is, bleeding. Uh, yes, yeah, I would say at this point there's definitely a trickle of blood coming out of the ears as they take the hand Fucking... away. You can see the, a few drips just hit the ground. Fucking right they are. Nobody breaks my hymen. Hey. Uh, anything else from yourself? <laughs> no, I think I've done enough damage to everybody. That's fine. You certainly have. <laughs> enough ears were damaged here. Yeah. Um, so, Callus, you're up. Daisy, you're on deck. Uh, I'm just going to go with a firebolt to whichever one looks the most hurt. So they're both looking pretty badly dinged up. Um, the one closest to you is the one trying to leg it. Yeah, go for him. Okay, cool. Make me a ranged spell attack, please. Uh, that is a twenty-six. Okay. Um, what does uh, what does Callus's fireball look like? Just a very fine streak of flame that comes sort of out up out of the spellbook and then launch straight forward at nine degrees from the spellbook. Okay, so it's almost like you've you've got your book open and there's just this casual kind of raise and flick motion. Yeah. As you sort yeah. of pull the energy of the spell from the book and just take that. Uh yeah, that that hits them. Roll uh roll some damage. Please. My <laughs> I've just dropped that on the f eight. <laughs> eight damage. Yep. As the firebolt streaks across, you catch it square, catch them square in the back. What you weren't anticipating was for it to carry on through. And as nice. they're running, their body just goes limp and falls forward into the street. Worth. Um, anything else from yourself? Uh, no. That's fine then. So, uh, Daisy, you're up, and then we're back to the top of the round. Are you back yet? Yes, sorry. Excellent. I was just making sure I really was all right. Um, am I, you said they were 20 feet apart, didn't you? So I should be able to get well, to Well, slightly more than 20 feet apart, but the one on your left as you look out the shop has just fallen down dead after basically having their heart pierced by Callus's firebolt. Yeah, so, but I should be about 20 feet away from the other one. Yes, yep. Okay, I am going to move across. Yeah, I'll charge across. I will go into a rage, and I yep. will attack him with Battle Axe. Excellent, so you are now raging. Okay. And roll some damage with that Battle Axe, please. Um, 15 to hit. That hits. Roll some damage. And... Hang on a second, let me just very quickly read some. Yeah, I can I can two-handed hold this. Yep. 
I can't I can't two handed hold when I'm using blade song, that's all. Yep, that's fine. Um I don't like that. I'm gonna use my insp uh, yeah, I'll use my inspiration to re roll that. Yep. <laughs> it was worse. Oh great. Um six damage. Okay. Six damage. <clears throat> oh, How do you want to do this? One second. I get plus two, so eight damage. Um, having seen the... I don't know what to call them. Occultist-looking wannabes yep. die. Uh, it spurs me on to dive across and two-hand swing. Just lit them straight down the middle. From head to arsehole. Yep. So yeah, you fly into the rage. The rest of you see just this primal, furious anger erupt on Daisy's face, which none of you have seen a wizard do before. <laughs> As she raises her battle axe in both hands and runs screaming across the street, Hyman, you've got just about enough room and time to step out of the way as the blade of this axe comes down and just cuts straight through this figure, tip to taint, and splits them in half. I like that better. I'm going to have to remember that. And I would say with that, we are now definitely out of initiative. Cool. I drift slowly back down to the ground. And like clench and slowly unclench my fists as you all start to to gather outside the front of the shop coming through the door climbing through the window de-levitating uh daisy still just in the fury of bloodlust just sort of looking around wildly and panting and just trying to rein herself back in um you see, you just hear the sort of jingle of keys, and behind you, uh, you see Jeffrey Laughingsteel has just sort of come out and a little bit shaken, just turns the sign on the door around that says closed and shuts it and locks the door and takes a look over at the broken window. And he's just like, are we sure that uh, Lady Alira will pay for that as well? I It'll be taken care of. Come oh. on. Oh, good, good, good. good Let's yes. get this token with Fleshy. Come on. Yes. And sort of clutching the, the leather satchel to the chest, they start to make their way through the streets with you. And you make your way back to um, Mulgrave University. Find your way back to Castar's office. And Jeffrey places the bag down on the table, pulls out the cube, and presents it to Castar. And Castar says, ah, wonderful, excellent, the final missing piece. Well, 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 this is very, very exciting, very exciting indeed. Now then, uh, Mr. Uh, Mister Lafistil, I understand that uh, you are to be compensated for your time. Uh, and, and, and my window, and your window. Castor kind of looks at us, what did you do to his window? We didn't do anything to it. There was a bomb, it came in, we threw it back out. Yeah, Hyman saved his life. I see. Mr. Laughingsteel, we will certainly make sure to have your window replaced. As you can see, this is the level of professionalism and protection offered by the Boromar clan. These highly skilled individuals have delivered you to us with nary a scratch on you. What are we, some kind of Boromar bunch? You can stop now. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Okay. So, Castor dismisses you, and you make your way back to the Bountiful Vine to lick your various wounds, recover. The following morning, you 
are awoken relatively early on for you. This is about eight o'clock. And as you make your way downstairs into the main hall of the Bountiful Vine, you see Dion, Boromar Lieutenant, standing there in a very fine long coat, his hair tied back, looking far more official than you've seen him before. He says, well, my friends, you've done very well indeed. And as a reward... I'm going to be sending you on a nice little holiday. Yeah! Boo, 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 boo. Where are we going? You are going on a some expenses paid trip around the entirety of Breland. Did you say some? Some expenses. <laughs> some expenses will be taken <laughs> care of on this holiday. But it wait. Is... Like the complimentary biscuits. <laughs> there will be complimentary biscuits. I can guarantee complimentary biscuits. But you might be asking yourself, Dion, you're so lovely and handsome. Surely you can't have thought of how we're going to get around on this holiday. Au contraire, my friends. Step outside and come and take a look at your transport for this getaway. You step outside and parked out the front of the Bountiful Vine is a large, bright pink carriage. <laughs> hey. The wheels have got little spinners going on them. Damn right. Yeah, they do. You can see that there is a subtle underlighting effect on subtle? the carriage. Subtle? At the front, where you would expect there to be a horse or some sort of beast to pull it, there is a sort of smaller extension to the carriage. Decked out in the same livery with two wheels on the front. Um, rather than reins, there appears to be a series of sort of pipes and gearing and wires heading up to the driver's cab where there is a wheel and, again, a series of, of levers and gauges set up there. And Dion says, My friends, may I present to you the first Boromar all-encompassing transport carriage powered by our patented infernal combustion engine. Now you may be oh, asking damn. yourself, the part which Castor sent you to collect. This is what it was for. And as he opens the door on the side of the carriage, a flock of doves appear as if from nowhere, <laughs> fly into the air, and then just disappear into mist. A set of steps lower themselves down to floor level. As you step inside, you can see that this has been decked out. First of all, the interior space is at least twice as wide and twice as long as the exterior space. There are six bunks set up at the back end. There is a hot tub. There is a stripper pole. There is a subtle layer of what looks like dry ice constantly yeah, across the floor. We need to have like a super over the top reaction to this, don't we? There is a sunroof. There is everything that you could have wished for. A small kitchenette. A seating area. All packed within the clever use of space that one would associate with some sort of dwelling on wheels. Is there a cuddly toy? <laughs> That's is going to go for. <clears throat> Roll a d20 here. There is a cuddly toy. Yeah, yeah boy. There is a, on one of the uh, benches, there's a little, amongst the cushions, there's a, a plushy owlbear. Hey. That's power. And as you take a few moments to revel in this, 
Dion says, there is just one catch. A vehicle such as this needs a driver. After a brief pregnant pause, you just hear (coughs) Hey, Claude. You look down the steps and you see that Claude is standing there in like a long sort of trench coat thing with like heavy fur around the collar. The fur itself quite matted and filthy. He's wearing a little flat cap. He's already got a set of goggles on and he is just saluting at Dion. His free hand holding a suitcase. Hey. And that's where we're going to leave it for tonight. Nice. Nice. So, that brings us to the end of tonight's adventure. My thanks once again for everyone for playing and for everyone watching along on Twitch or catching up on the video on demand. We'll be back in two weeks' time on Sunday, the 9th of May, to do this all over again. Until then, stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask, and we'll see you next time. Good night. Bye. Bye.